I've got something special for this video. Grandmaster Amon Hamilton is a genius and an artist. You may have heard of Reset Mate, which is the checkmate that Grandmaster Amon Hamilton has come up with, where you basically get your opponent's king into some checkmate, like this final position here. And the idea is that all of white's pieces are on the back rank as if they had just started the game. There's no pawns on the board, and of course black has their king only, but they are in checkmate. Now how do we get to this position? This video we're going to explain not only how to do this reset mate, but also how to pre-move it, as Grandmaster Bon Hamilton has recently done in a game against an international master. And at the end of this video, I'll even try this mate myself and pre-move it against the chess.com top engine, just to illustrate how this works in all situations. But for now, let's go slowly through this. Now what's going to happen is usually you're going to be up a ton of material, you'll start promoting your pawns, and then you kind of reset this position back if you have enough pieces. I will say try and be wary of what color your bishops are that are remaining. I know I tried this one time, and I had a bunch of pieces left over and then realized that I had no dark scored bishop, and I had pawns on four different files and all of them promote on light squares. <laughs> But assuming that you get all of their pieces back, then you can just give away the rest of your material and reset your pieces back to this position. All right, now a few things you have to say about the starting position. Where the enemy king is literally does not matter, as long as it is not on one square. And so that one square we have to avoid is g3. The king cannot start on this, and we'll explain why in a little bit. But anywhere else, such as right on here on c7, or anywhere else on the board that their king is, this sequence of 20 moves that we can pre-move, will always lead to checkmate on the last move with the queen coming back to d1, and it will never stalemate anywhere along the way. I'll leave the PGN of the final moves in the video description, that way you can copy it and try and memorize these like I have. But let's show the very first move that we have, and explain why the king cannot be on g3. So the very first move here is queen to e2. If the king is anywhere on this side of the board, queen d2 also works, but for a technique, let's go with queen e2 as this is the move that we'll try to do in all situations. Now, they'll move, and all of their moves really don't matter for this. We're only focused on our moves because this will win in all situations. We'll now go queen g2. That is the second move of this sequence. But I did say what happens if the king is on g3. Why is this avoided? So let's go back to the very starting position here and just teleport the king to this square. So say we have the king starting on this square, you'll notice that when we play queen e2, before we have a chance to play queen g2, you'll notice that their king is actually not in check and has no legal moves. And so this would be an immediate stalemate. And so any other square other than g3, that's why this works. But let's return to our position. And so now that our queen is on g2, you will notice that the queen here is cutting off all of the g file and the rook here is cutting off all of the h file which means that by default the enemy king cannot be on any of those squares. Of course they cannot be on other squares too, like of course we have the rook here, we have the bishop here, and many other things based on where our pieces are at. But for simplicity's sake, let's focus on the h and g file. So they make a move, and now we go rook to h3, the third move in our sequence. So we've had queen e2, queen g2, and now rook to h3. I'm not going to have arrows for all of these moves. Again, I'll just have the pg at the very end, so you can take a look at this and memorize it. But this is the third move in the sequence. And so after this, we now play rook to f3. And remember that our queen has been on the g file the entire time, and the king cannot teleport to the h file. The enemy king can no longer be on the third file here. And we'll keep pushing them further and further over one file at a time, until we get to a position in the middle of the board, and then we'll kind of swing over in a different direction. So we'll see that when we get there. So next we play queen to g4, and we just keep sweeping our pieces up here. But now it looks like almost ladder mate, but we're not going for checkmate that way, we're going for a very pretty reset mate. And so we do this little stutter step move, rook to f6. I've actually discussed this stutter step idea, which avoids stalemate. I explained that in a different video on how to pre-move queen checkmate. You can check that out as well. I'll leave the link in the video description. But this move is designed to avoid stalemate, and so now they move further over. And now we have queen g7. And if this was trying to get an efficient pre-move checkmate, then our ladder mate would continue with rook to f8. But in this pre-move sequence, we don't know where their king is at. In this case, it just so happens to be on this square. But notice, because of the way that we've corralled their king, their king can only legally be on these squares. And it couldn't even have been here because our queen is just given check. 
And so really, the king is cut off to just these squares. And actually, we can even eliminate this square because the rook controls it. So their king is very corralled. So even though it could have been potentially on the entire chessboard, we know that by default, wherever they start it, as long as it wasn't g3 and getting stalemate, the king now is in one of these squares. So they make a move. But now we go queen to f8. And we do this interesting little sequence here where we now go rook to d6. And the idea of swinging around this way is the queen has been controlling these squares and now the rook goes here, but also defended by the queen. And so if the enemy king was ever here on c7, it could never take the rook. And then it would be forced to move somewhere, like say back to b7. What really impresses me about this is not so much how fast the technique is, because you just memorize it and you learn it. But what really impresses me is that Amon Hamilton spent his time studying this random position for a rainy day, as he describes it, 20 moves of his theory that he came up with, and comes up with this really pretty masterpiece idea. Obviously, he needed a way to implement this quickly so he could pull it off in a speed game, and I'm really happy that he was able to pull this off. So now their king has to go somewhere, and now rook to d8. And notice again, we are protected by our queen. And so in doing this little sequence that we've pushed over, the king can really only be on the b or c file. So they make a king move. And now we have one of the key ideas here, which is queen to e7. First, we've started sweeping them right to left on the board from our perspective. And now we're going to start swooping down with the rook coming to d6. And it looks like we're doing ladder mate closer to our army. So they go somewhere and then rook to d6. But here's where things start to get a little tricky. Because if you look, what legal squares does the black king have? It's important that this move here was the rook and not the rook on e7 and queen on d6. Because in that flipped order, this would not work. Because here the only legal move is king to c5. Which is only possible because of the interference of putting our rook blocking the check that would be on the king. The king cannot go to the a file and it cannot come down here because of the bishop. So king c5 is the only legal move. And so even though their king could have started anywhere on the board, it has now been kind of corralled into the situation where regardless where they started, the king has to be on this square if you've done the sequence correctly so far. And so now we actually play queen to c7 check, knowing that the king legally can only be on this square. And so the king cannot come up, of course, because the queen and the rook. And they can't come here because of our bishop. This square for the bishop as well, and this square for the rook. And of course the rook here as well. So really, by default, you can see they only have king to b4. And the reason it's important that we have these limited options for the opponent is because we're pre-moving all of this. So we don't have time to really realize where their king is at. It literally does not matter in this situation. They have to go to b4. And now we start doing this rook lift maneuver to get it back to the original position. So we go rook to d2. Notice the interesting geometry here where they only have one legal move again. They have to go king b3. And so next we play rook to h2. They move back, have to shuffle the same places over and over. And now rook to h1. We just have to get the queen back to d1 and then we'll have her checkmate. They move down. And now we play a key idea again. Queen to d6. The important point that it is now taking away the b4 square the king was previously at. And remember, we used to have the rook on the second rank, so that prevented the king from going down to c2 prematurely. But now they are forced down here because they cannot return back to b4. And so king c2 is the only legal move. And now that the king has gone back to c2, you can sense the pattern here. Now the queen comes all the way back to d1, and this is checkmate. Not only reset mate, but pre-move the entire sequence. Now, of course, I will have the PGN for everyone as mentioned. And now, as promised, I'm going to play this against the Maximum Chess.com computer. And we'll see how I can try and pre-move this checkmate, even against this 3200 bot. And so now you can fully appreciate the genius and the artistry that Grandmaster Mon Hamilton has come up with on this one. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next chess video.